Howard Lorber is here. He's the president and CEO of the Vector Group. He's also the chairman of Douglas Elliman. Of course, our guest host today is Sam Zell. Uh, Howard, when you start looking around the globe at where you want to invest right now, what, what jumps out to you? Well, what jumps out to me is, you know, Vancouver is a good example. It was up, up, up until they put taxes on it. And now it's down. So the readjustment is happening. So you have to be careful with that. But it's interesting to me that when you look and you say the worst performing cities were, you know, uh, price wise were London and New York. Yet they're ranked number one and two in the index, the Knight Frank index, as to where people want to be. And that's based on livability, obviously, government, taxes, culture. So people still want to be there. So I guess what you would look forward to is appreciation in those markets at some time. New York specifically was hurt this past year because of the uh, mansion taxes and the other taxes that they're still talking about for New York City purchases. So taxes obviously have a big impact. What about coronavirus? Does that change the picture at all? It's a we, rapidly... Uh, we, haven't seen, we haven't seen it yet. In fact, uh, we were talking earlier, it's, it's shocking that our open houses that brokers have on you know, yeah. weekends are packed. So <laughs> One place you still I don't see know, crowd. Maybe, maybe they just want to get out and they think that's a safe place to go. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty busy. Uh, Sam made the point a little earlier that the REITs are still really hanging in there, that you haven't yeah. seen much of a reaction. Why do you think that is, Sam? Well, I think that, first of all, the REITs are, are relatively speaking, under leveraged. Mm -hmm. I mean, real estate historically has been a 60, 75 percent, you know, LTV kind of business. Um, you know, equity residential is 35 percent. Equity lifestyles is 25 percent. A lot of other companies are all you know, much, much less leveraged than they have been in the past. I think there's a, that from a trend point of view, um, I think that, the, the, and no argument about the number one choice of markets, but I think that more and more uh, affordability is more and more of a challenge. And I think that, you know, smart real estate investors are going to kind of focus on, well, where do you go if you can't, if you can't afford New York? Or if you can't afford London, uh, is that Nashville? Is that Austin? Uh, is that Madison, Wisconsin? Is Those that markets are almost overheated, though. You look at the price growth yeah. there, and it's just they're quickly becoming less affordable. They're, they're quickly becoming less affordable, but they have the one thing necessary to deal with affordability. Space. And that's land. Yeah. yeah. And they have lots and lots of land. Mm. So uh, by, almost by definition, even though Prices in Nashville have gone up a lot. Uh, in Nashville have gone up a lot. There's still an ability to catch up. Uh, the problem in California and all this homeless problem is that you have legislative, Im uh, you know, uh, impediments to creating housing supply, and so you create a perpetual environment of shortage, which creates the highest prices in the country. And aside from affordability, you've got the wealthy going to Florida because of the salt tech changes. And in California, going to Colorado, Colorado, Colorado Texas, 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 Texas. Your, are, Is your whole business changing to focus on those lower tax states where people want to move? Yeah, is it happening? Well, first of all, you have to change because it's happening. So, you know, if, if you look at our volume numbers, we're up 20, over 20 percent last year in volume in South Florida. And we're down 4 percent in New York City. But I was going to ask you about that. If taxes are the number one thing that really changed whether the desirability, how huge of an impact has that had here in New York? And you think it's, there'll be a time where New York is big, no longer at the top? It's had a very, it's had a very big impact. Yeah. But the fact is, people still want to be in New York. But at some point. But that's what, that's what I wonder. Point. What is that tipping right. point? The breaking point. What, what is the breaking point? Yeah, what, no, no one knows until it happens. Right. You know, right. right now, with the legislature talking about a, a now a Peter Tear tax, right. yeah. which yeah. a Peter Tear being if you don't file a state and city tax returns, it's a Peter Tear. Right. And right. then have another tax, like the mansion tax, except it'll be annual. So, uh, we, we got to go. We used to have you on all the time because you're a huge backer of the president and a close friend of the president. Any comments? How, how's his, what, have you talked to him? How's he feeling? Is he uh, excited? Is he wanna, does he like Biden? Who's he want to really face? You think Biden or, or Bernie? Or, or uh, I don't think he cares. You don't really don't. No, I don't think he cares. Have you ever lobbied him on the salt tax? Yes, we have conversations about it. We had it in the beginning. Uh, I, I, I think it'll be looked at again. You think he will? I, I hope he so. Would I, I mean, I look, can't imagine he will. 
I think the trend is, com is completely the opposite. Really? I, mean, I think that salt is just the first step in just in general. I mean, what was it, 15 years ago that Canada eliminated mortgage deductions? Yeah. And everybody said, oh my God, the end of the All world is going to come. Run. If, it were, if Bloomberg were going to be president, we'd be talking about salt. We'd need something totally different. Anyway, uh, Howard Wilbur, uh, because we wouldn't have any more. You'd have to really start to like pepper.